Welcome to part two of the DWC versus Cracky hydroponic grow method. Today in this video, we're gonna be looking at aerating the water versus not aerating the water and seeing how that affects plant growth. Now this is actually the exact same experiment I did in part one, except the main difference is here is I'm using clones from those plants and not just growing eight separate plants. Now the reason why I'm doing this part is because part one was inconclusive, but I did learn a lot about the physical properties of the water, like the pH and the TDS and all that, if you do aerate it or if you don't aerate it. So if you'd like to learn about that or if you haven't seen part one, it will be in the link below in the video description. Um, so what I did for this video is I actually took cuttings from those plants, uh, two different plants. One plant was in the aerated bin, one plant was in the not aerated bin. I took four cuttings each. And I took those cuttings and I put them in a container of water for about a week and let them root. And then I took those cuttings and I put them in rock wool and then I put them in a net pot filled with hydrogen clay pebbles and then I set those aside. So then what I did is I took these two kitty litter containers, yes that's actually what they are, is kitty litter containers, um, and I painted them black. Now if you're new to hydroponics, the reason why you're using something that doesn't let light in is because roots hate light and algae loves it, so you want to block the light out. Uh, so I took the tops of these containers and I cut four holes each so I can fit the net pots in. And then in the one container I, I added the air stone and then I took a soldering iron and actually just fused it to the bottom so that way it can't come off. Uh, so the main differences between the first part and this part is the clones and also the bigger containers. So the air stone is actually sitting much lower in the water so you get better air diffusion into the water. Um, I'm also using a much stronger light as well. The light is about twice as powerful as the light I used in the first part. So we're kind of covering all the different factors and hopefully we get a better result from in this video. Um, one thing I want to add is the, uh, the, the containers here. I kind of like these because number one, they're free. Uh, and number two, they got handles on them and they have these little flip tops on them. So I actually can flip up the top without actually having to take it off. So if I want to add water to it or take it out or just view it inside there without moving anything. So it makes it a little bit easier. So I actually do like these. So I recommend if anyone wants to do hydroponics and they want some free buckets and you have cats and you buy kitty litter, go ahead and use those containers. Uh, they seem to work out pretty well here. Um, so anyways, that's all for this first segment of this video and we'll see you back in a minute after these are done growing. Okay, we are about a third of the way into this experiment here based on the growth of these plants. And you can see they've grown quite a bit in just a week and a half. Uh, but I wanna kinda of interject before I end this video to explain a couple things. Uh, one of those things is you're probably, get, you're probably asking why I'm using uh, clones from two different plants. Well, I'm not taking those cuttings and separating them in each bucket like, like you're thinking. What I did is I took um, cuttings from one plant and I put them in the front row of each bucket and cuttings from another plant and put them in the back row of each bucket. So each bucket has both plants in it. Um, that just gives better overall consistency, consistency to the experiment. Uh, the other thing um, some of you are probably asking is why would, I, why would I use basil if it doesn't need a lot of oxygen to begin with to, to grow um, compared to like a fruiting plant? Well, I think it's a really good way to start an experiment or a series of experiments is if something doesn't need a lot of something but can still benefit from it, how much does it benefit from it? So what I'm doing with this, this experiment is using, using basil to try to see if there is much of a difference with aerating the water versus not aerating the water. Um, so I just wanna kind of explain that. But you can also see from when I started this experiment, the plants were all about uh, even height, uh, very, very similar uh, as, as far as like, the amount of leaves and everything. Um, also, the other thing I wanted to kind of explain is uh, what you probably, you don't know yet, but I'm telling you now. Uh, when I started this off, I waited about a day or two, maybe it was three days, before I actually started aerating the water because one thing I learned from the uh, first time I did the experiment is it was erroneous results because uh, there was very, it was growing very differently in the aerated water versus crack key because when you aerate the water, it changes the pH. And if you don't have a lot of roots to begin with, um, it's, you're not gonna get consistent results with that. And I learned that from the first experiment. If you watch that video, you'll understand it too. But I waited till the roots grew in. You can see that from these pictures here. Uh, they grew in uh, quite a bit. And then I started aerating the water. So that way, everything starts off kind of even. And within those couple of days, the plants grew hardly at all anyway. So it didn't, really affect, uh, it didn't really affect the experiment as far as how it started off. So that's about it for this interjection. And I will see you in a second when these are done growing. All right, it is a few weeks later now, uh, probably closer to a month, 
and I'm concluding this experiment here. And without making you wait any longer for an answer, uh, there is no significant difference in growth between the Cracky method versus DWC growing basil and hydroponic setup here. Um, I am going to talk about some of the differences though, because there are a few differences that are something to note. But as far as significant differences in plant mass or how much weight you get of produce, um, there's nothing sig significant here. For the home grower, for the hobbyist, that's kind of what this is centered towards. But commercial wise, maybe there might be enough of a difference if you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, maybe then you can say there might be a difference enough to where you might want to use aerated water uh, or not aerated water. But that's not what this experiment's about. Um, so some of the differences here, uh, like I said, nothing significant, but one thing I did notice uh, through this video and the last video I did was the aerated uh, method seemed to have much uh, less stable pH. And not, I'm not really quite sure in this experiment why the pH actually dropped um, in the, right after the first segment or the second segment of this video, I tested the pH and the reason why I tested it, it was just well, just because I, I needed to, but also because I noticed the, um, the, the stems of the plants in the aerated uh, bucket, they seemed a little bit more flimsy than the one in the cracky. So I, I looked at the pH right away and the pH had dropped down to 5.5 in the aerated method uh, to where it was stayed at, stayed at 6.5 in the cracky. And I've noticed this through all the tests I've ever done is cracky method seems to, be have a much, seems to have much more of a stable pH. Uh, so that is something to note. As far as affecting the plant growth, uh, maybe a little bit is, you know, in stem structure as far as how flimsy the stems were, but it wasn't really much of a difference. It was just something a little bit noticeable. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing I did notice, in, and this is not necessarily uh, significant to this particular experiment, uh, but hydroponics in general, and that is silica. Because when you grow plants in soil, soil all over the, all over the world pretty much has silica in it, and plants use that. Uh, just like concrete is, you know, makes, you know, it, it makes it harder because it's got silica in it. Uh, plants absorb silica they deposit in their, in their stem walls, in their cell structure and everything, and it makes uh, you know, like this, the stems of the plant much more firm, like trees and everything. They all, they all need silica, bamboo. They, they just continue to deposit in there, which strengthens it. It does much more than that rather than just that, but um, that was one of the main things I noticed that I was lacking in with silica, so I added it. And the way, the way that I did that is this general hydroponics um, solution here, which is just called Armor C or Psi. I, I'm not really sure the way you pronounce it, but it's, Si stands for silica, and it's just derived from potassium silicate. So once I added that, uh, big difference in the way they grew back, because when I cut the plants back, um, I added that to the solution, and when they grew back, the stems became much more firm, much more rigid. Uh, the leaves actually looked a lot healthier. Uh, and the pH actually seemed to be more stable because I tested the pH at the end of this experiment and in both methods, they were almost the same. They were just maybe just slightly off from each other, but very, very close. So I think that had something to do with uh, helping the pH stay stable because that is a very alkaline product and you have to add pH down or acid to actually bring it back up to uh, you know, a pH of about 6.5 when you add it. So. I think that might have played a little role in balancing the pH, but still something to note is when you're aerating the water, it seems like it uh, has an effect on the pH a lot more than the cracky method. So when I cut these plants back uh, and they grew back, they grew back very well. But one of the problems I ran into when I actually did that is I noticed that when I cut them back, it had to come back all at the same node, otherwise it wouldn't be fair. Um, but each node had developed uh, starter shoots um, out of the stem a little bit differently. So some of them had hardly any starter shoots coming out while other ones were very well developed in both methods. So when I cut them back, the ones that already had well developed shoots recovered a lot quicker than the other ones. So that kind of, it kind of corrupted the experiment as far as being able to weigh the plants because in this case right now, there were three plants that grew back large in the aerated bin 
and two plants that grew back large in a cracking method. And that had nothing to do with the methods themselves. It was just the plants themselves that had um, smaller starter shoots on the stems when they, when they had to recover after they were being cut back. Um, however, one thing I, I did notice in this video and in the last video I did was the, it always seemed to be that the aerated method had much better recovery on the plants. Um, but other than that, as far as how they grew in each one, as far as the rate, the rate at which they grew, the speed, um, the structure of the plants, the root structure, everything, uh, they're both almost the same. So that kind of concludes this experiment here. Uh, I've learned a little bit from it. I hope I helped some of you out there looking for some answers. Um, I will be doing another video, as I've stated before, uh, with growing a flowering or fruiting plant, uh, which is what which is the type of plant that you can benefit more from aerating the water. Um, so I think what I'm going to be doing in the next video is growing peppers in this same type of experiment and seeing if there's any difference in growth uh, as far as the rate at which they grow, uh, the speed, the structure, uh, the plant mass, everything. So uh, I hope this video was helpful to some of you and hope to see you in the next video. So thanks for watching.